You're listening to Talk of Champions, an Ole Miss Spirit podcast with Ben Garrett. It's up, it's up, it's up, it's up, it's up. It's up. the best Ole Miss wide receiver of all time. A.J. Brown came to mind first, right? The mayor of Starkville who defiantly hung around during the NCAA mess for Ole Miss and despite recruiting overtures from his good friend and now quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles, Jalen Hurts in Alabama. Every contender tried to get their hands on A.J. Brown when the NCAA stuff went down. And they permitted all Ole Miss upperclassmen to lead to transfer without penalty. D.K. Metcalf nearly left for Arizona State. A.J. Brown was tempted by Jalen Hurts' friend in Alabama. But they stayed. And good thing, too, because Ole Miss had little to offer its fans back then. We all remember that. That wasn't that long ago. Those were miserable times. It was A.J. and D.K. and George Tiamu and Phil Longo's obsession with not getting the ball, not feeding Dawson Knox at tight end. All of those players, all of those smaller storylines was all the Rebels really had. Individual accomplishment. So, of course, it's a little bit lost now in 2024 when Ole Miss is going for a title when some historic stuff is going down with one particular Ole Miss Rebel, Trey Harris. Because A.J. Brown, he was pretty much the whole program identity once he sent out that Wolf of Wall Street video says, I'm not going anywhere. And especially so once DK got hurt, he was it. That, that was it. Laquan Treadwell popularized that number one as the Ole Miss wide receiver number, but A.J. Brown cemented that legacy, a legacy that hangs over Aiden Williams, who's wearing that number one. Part of the heightened expectations for Aiden Williams, uh, a former in-state four-star recruit, is the number Ole Miss gave him when he got here. Number one, Jonathan Mingo wore that number. And he's one of the best ever do it at Ole Miss, too. So, who is the best Ole Miss wide receiver of all time? Trey Harris is tracking, as I mentioned Monday. That's what this Wednesday show is going to be about. Trey Harris is tracking to make a case as the very best Ole Miss wide receiver ever. And if he helps Ole Miss, who's 4-0, got Kentucky coming up the first SEC game of the year, If he leads Ole Miss, helps lead Ole Miss to its first national championship since the 60s? Welcome inside the Riverland Roofing Studios. I'm Ben Garrett. This is Talk of Champions. Riverland Roofing for all your roofing needs. The house up top for all your roofing needs. You call or text Riverland Roofing today. 662-644-4297. That's 662-644-4297. You can visit them online at riverlandroofing.com. And we at the Ole Miss Spirit, omspirit.com, are running a promotion this week to celebrate Ole Miss opening its SEC schedule. If you're a new sub, if you want to try us out and you've been Reticent, hesitant to do it till now. Sign up today with code REBS at checkout, R-E-B-S, REBS at checkout. Get 50% off an annual subscription. That's code REBS at omspirit.com to get 50% off an annual sub. And number six Ole Miss, your number six Ole Miss football rebels. They host Kentucky, who's 2-2, and including two losses in the SEC. Saturday at 11 a.m. Central Time on ABC, Ole Miss currently boasts the nation's top-ranked offense and top-ranked defense as far as scoring. Uh, the Rebels are third in tackles for loss. Ole Miss is 30-14-1 against Kentucky in a series that dates back to 1944. The Rebels opened as 20-point favorites. They've won three straight against these Kentucky Wildcats, six in a row at home, where they're 9-2 all-time as Ole Miss against Kentucky at Vaught hemingway Stadium. Uh, the teams have played twice since Lane Kiffin took over as Ole Miss head coach in 2020. The Rebels, of course, have won both won both of those games. Kentucky is led offensively by Georgia transfer quarterback Brock Vandegriff. Demi Sumo uh, Carnby is 11th in the SEC in rushing. I probably butchered your name. I'm sorry. Dane Key is 11th in receiving yards per game at 66 per game. And the Rebels will also have to contend with Barry Brown, that Ole Miss recruiting target, former four-star that Ole Miss absolutely – no, five-star that Ole Miss absolutely wanted to have. He ended up at Kentucky, and he could really challenge Ole Miss on the perimeter or in space. And like I mentioned, Kentucky already lost two SEC games, South Carolina and Georgia. But like I've told you countless times before, I'm not an expert. I don't pretend to be. Uh, I'll get Jarrell Poe like I did the last time on to preview opponents. I'll get some other – guests that are smarter than me, true football experts to come on and break down opponents. But back to the topic 
at hand in this all-new edition of Talk of Champions, powered as always by Riverland Roofing. In the Ole Miss spirit, OleMissSpirit.com, the of on three. Who's the best Ole Miss wide receiver of all time? And I don't bring this up just to have something to cover on this show. It's actually been on my mind for a while. I went diving into the numbers a couple of days ago and then really dove into them again this week for this podcast because Ole Miss especially in the modern era has developed a reputation as what? A wide receiver factory of sorts. Trey Harris and Juice Wells and Jordan Watkins and Caden Lee, they're only continuing that tradition. Of course, Trey Harris, he's the best of the bunch. And before SEC play begins... I thought we needed to take a beat, take a minute, to truly appreciate the history we're watching with Trey Harris in real time. We've talked about the history with Jackson Dart. We've talked about the history with this Ole Miss team writ large, the first title potentially since the 60s, making the playoffs, uh, contending to go to Atlanta for the first time, playing the SEC championship game. They're right in contention for all of those things. But just as in 2016, uh, when the only thing to pay attention to was individual accomplishment, let's not allow it then in 2024 when the team-wide uh, stuff that you've all been wanting and praying for since you were little to see almost contend for a title and, and be in this contention place, let's not allow for individual historic accomplishment to get lost. So before Kentucky, before SEC play begins, before we get into the minutia of the gauntlet that it is, the SEC, let's take a minute to appreciate this history in the making. In real time, a player will still be talking about in Trey Harris years and years and years from now in the annals of the best to ever come through Ole Miss. And it's remarkable for a number of reasons, not the least of which he's done this in two Ole Miss years. Now, Laquan Treadwell, he played three seasons at Ole Miss. He was the first Ole Miss Rebel named a finalist for the Blitnikoff. Trey Harris, he's on the watch list for that Bolitnikoff Award. The, it's awarded each year to the very best wide receiver in college football. He currently leads the SEC in receiving, while Ole Miss offensively is averaging an SEC leading 670.8 yards of offense per game, including an SEC leading 422.8 passing yards. They haven't played anybody. Furman was nobody. Middle Tennessee, Georgia Southern was better, but still the competition steps up. So understanding that, the pace has to be extended by Trey Harris. Ole Miss has to keep the ball rolling. We can only go by what we've seen so far if he keeps this pace. If Ole Miss keeps this pace, all the things you're hoping to see will come to fruition because this is historic. Jackson Dart, his 1,554 passing yards, the best start for an SEC quarterback since Tim Couch in 1998. He's number one nationally in passing yards. Trey Harris is second in the nation in receiving He's just nine off the pace of San Jose State's Nick Nash. And that's made more impressive when you consider that Nick Nash isn't having to contend with other mouths to feed like Juice Wells, Jordan Watkins, Caden Priestcorn, Henry Parrish. Trey Harris is just the best of a cupboard filled with weapons for an Ole Miss National Championship contender. But you don't have to just believe me. Jim Nagy from the Senior Bowl. Mentioned Trey Harris this week and how he is emerging, even unlocking uh, areas of his game that many didn't think he had, going to another level, and he was already one of the best. He's ascending and leveling up with most, including me, not thinking he had another gear like this. We didn't, or maybe didn't think, not necessarily didn't think he had, didn't have another gear like this, but what would that gear even look like? Because he's never going to be the guy that takes the top off of coverage. Maybe you say, well, he, he could be that burner. He could pull those Braylon Sanders um, routes off and extend that out, become that deep threat maybe that wasn't or isn't a huge part of his game because he's never going to be a take-the-top-off-the-coverage kind of guy. But he's the highest-graded returning wide receiver against single coverage in the SEC, according to Pro Football Focus. And teams so far have tried to bracket him. But when you bracket him, the beauty of this old Miss offense, you try to bracket Trey Harris, Juice Wells will go to the, for the 40 to 60 yarder. Jordan Watkins had a 75 yarder two weeks ago. You can't because the, the weapons aren't, it's not just Laquan. It's not just A.J. Brown. It's not just Trey Harris. It's all because of the attention, though, that Trey Harris is commanding, that he's opening up and make uh, opportunities for his teammates and making his teammates better. Opposing defenses have tried to key in on Trey Harris, but he's gone from an elite level 50-50 pass catcher that can win those 50-50 balls to a one-man defense beater. The numbers are what they are. 
we have to ready ourselves for this discussion. We have to ready ourselves for the possibility that A.J. Brown isn't the GOAT anymore or won't be by the end of the year. Because I never thought I would say that. A.J. Brown is the standard. But the numbers are insane. And it's not just the numbers for A.J., why he's a legend. I've already kind of touched on it. And when you factor in the -the off-the-field factors, that's another area where Trey Harris is ascending, where he's transcending the discussion, where A.J. saved a program or gave fans something to believe in. Trey Harris is leading the title contender. He's every bit the leader that Jackson Dart is for this football team. One of the very best football teams in college football. So it's time, I say, over at the Ole Miss Spirit, omspirit.com, Riverland Roofing, Ben Garrett, I say it's time that we give him his true shine, especially as the SEC gauntlet sets to open up. The SEC is a beast, and Trey Harris has to stay healthy and continue to put it up. But the storylines are going to be dominated by what happens in these games, these real... um, competitive games where the opponents can fight back, unlike the four non-cons to start the year. That's why Ole Miss is number seven in the AP instead of number five, number six, according to some. Um, It's because teams want to see them do it against better competition. It's fine, whatever. That starts this weekend. So these numbers might not necessarily stay this way. They might not stabilize this way. This might just be against non-cons. But for two years, that is not what this has been. When he's healthy, Trey Harris is one of the absolute best in all of football. All of football. The SEC gauntlet is here. Let's not allow for what Trey Harris is doing individually because we're certainly not doing it with Jackson Dart. He's not going to get Trey Harris the same shine as Jackson Dart putting up these historic numbers because the Heisman is now a quarterback award. Wide receivers don't win this. But again, better competition. Kentucky is coming. Can you continue that? But let's first look at the top 25 wide receivers in Ole Miss history. I've got Jameis Logan as number 25. He had 1,734 career yards. He's number 25 for me. Uh, We all agree then. If Jameis is number 25, Trey Harris has already bettered that production. In two years, 1,614 yards, uh, just a little bit off the pace, nearly matched Jameis Logan. Uh, And he was nearly, was Trey Harris, a 1,000-yard receiver at Louisiana Tech. But we're not even factoring in Louisiana Tech. Otherwise, he clears most everybody. We're just factoring factoring in two years of Ole Miss for the Ole Miss discussion. Because, Trey, if you're going to climb past AJ, if you're going to climb past Shea, you're going to have to do something crazy. But he has been doing something crazy. We need to appreciate the craziness and absurdity of these numbers for his career, including Ole Miss and Louisiana Tech, 3,140 yards, 26 touchdowns, 12 at Ole Miss, though. So we're going by the Ole Miss numbers. And remember, too, this is only four games in to his second full Ole Miss season and his final Ole Miss season. We're considering the Ole Miss numbers and recognize, too, there are at least eight regular season games coming. And then it's the postseason. And get that we are Ole Miss out of your blood system. Get it done. Flush it through. He could get 11 or 12 more opportunities. Ole Miss is going to the playoff, health permitting. He's got to stay healthy because health is something you have to watch with Trey Harris. We all remember last year he missed games to start the season, and yet the numbers still are what they are. He's going to sail past Jamez Logan, a four-year player, just as he'll sail past Jonathan Mingo. Mike Espy, he's going to clear DeMarcus Lodge. I'm looking at the numbers here. Bill Flowers, 1,795 yards. Corey Peterson, 1,842. And again, he'll do it all in just two years. We've already reached the top 10 or top 10 territory already with Trey Harris. He needs just two more touchdowns and 300 more yards to match or pass Mike Wallace's four-year career. Willie Green, Already in his rear view. I know what some of you old-timers are going to say. What about Willie? What about uh, Jim Poole? He's well on his way to clearing them as well. He trails Willie Green in yards because Willie Green had 2,274, but eight regular season games remaining, plus the postseason. And he's already at 1,600. And he's averaging over 150 a game and nine and a half catches. On pace for one of the best statistical seasons ever produced in college, even potentially better than Elijah Moore, but only four games against cupcakes. But that's why I wanted to do it today, so that we're all paying attention to it. Not just go, man, Trey Harris is awesome. No, Trey Harris 
is entering that GOAT discussion. Now he's there. He's top five. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Protecting homes and businesses from the whims of nature, you need more than just quality materials. You require Riverland Roofing. Licensed, insured, and certified, Riverland Roofing offers not only the assurance of excellence, but a tailored approach to your unique structural needs and budget. To learn more about what Riverland Roofing can do for you and the community, call them at 662-644-4297 or visit riverlandroofing.com. This is Cali. With C Spire's blazing fast nationwide 5G network, she's got her fans in the palm of her hands. Live streaming her Mississippi blues from her phone wherever she is. Out there, wherever they are. Right now, get the latest 5G phone on us. Only at C Spire, customer inspired. Introducing the new and improved BNA Bank mobile app. From setting transaction alerts and tracking your spending habits, to managing travel plans and turning off a lost or stolen debit card, you can take care of all of it in the new BNA mobile app. At BNA Bank, we know that life moves pretty fast, and we have the mobile technology to keep up with your life on the go. BNA Bank, local, invested, modern banking. Vince Sanders, Cody Core, Quincy Adeboyjo. Comparatively, his numbers are better. Dexter is a little tougher of a conversation, Dexter McCluster, only because we now think of Dexter more as a running back because that's what he always should have been. Why Houston not waited, we'll never know. Only continue to remember how miserable the South Carolina game was. To emphasize, all of this for Trey Harris is against the backdrop of two seasons, and he's within shouting distance of Dante Moncrief, 2,371 yards and 20 touchdowns. The touchdowns are going to be hard. He's at 13. 20? Shea Hodge had 22. But 7 and 11 games? Doesn't sound all that crazy at all. Especially when he's averaging a touchdown a game. His SEC leading 628 receiving yards, second in the country. Nearly double Arkansas's Andrew Armstrong, who's second in the SEC at 348. This is historic stuff. He's matched Jonathan Mingo's 13 career touchdowns. Mike Espy had 10 with Eli and others thrown in the ball. Chris Collins and Shea Hodge, to me, they're in a tier unto themselves as not appreciated enough for how unbelievably good they were. They are top five all-time great Ole Miss wide receiver candidates, if not included. Shea Hodge, 2,646 yards, 22 touchdowns. Chris Collins, 2,621 yards, 25 touchdowns. And he did it. With Tay Biddle dropping everything. Matt, Mike Espy was good, but Chris Collins was the go-to for Eli. And look at the numbers. Brown, A.J. Brown, our guy, the mayor, 19 touchdowns. Grant Hurd, 2,274 yards, 16 touchdowns. Will Trey Harris get 600 more yards, three more touchdowns? I think so. He's on pace for over 1,800 regular season yards alone. Regular season yards. He scored a touchdown a game on average. We're having this conversation, this Trey Harris GOAT conversation today because he's already in the top seven. He already clears some of the favorites that you've always had as uh, your favorite Ole Miss wide receivers. There's certainly no better two-year Ole Miss wide receiver in history. He needs three touchdowns to match Elijah Moore. Because I know Cade Smith, a great follow on Twitter, guys like, like, I'm with you. I'm an Elijah Moore stand. He needs to get more credit for being in the GOAT conversation. He had 2,441 career yards, but he did most of his damage in one season. The last one, 2020. And it's not even arguable. No almost wide receiver before or after has done what Elijah Moore did in 2020. Well, that is until what Trey Harris is doing right now. Moore was a consensus first team All-American in that COVID season. He only played eight games. Uh, before he opted out for the NFL draft, he had a school record, 86 catches, 1,193 yards, eight touchdowns, led the country in receiving yards per game, receptions per game. The yards were the most ever by an SEC player through the first game, four, eight games of a season, and their third in Ole Miss's single-season record books. Eight games. Fell just 127 yards shy of A.J. Brown's 2018 mark of 1,320 yards, which our man Trey Harris is already halfway to. 
That's four less games that AJ did it in, or that Elijah did it in, than AJ did it in. And Trey is already halfway to AJ's mark. Now, AJ is Ole Miss's all time leading receiver, 2,984 yards. Now, if Harris matches his current play, pace, he'll clear that number two. Not to mention Laquan Treadwell's record setting catches per game of 6.31 and receiving yards per game, 88.7. Trey Harris is averaging over nine catches at 150 yards per game. Again, against four cupcakes. But we all need to be aware of just how insane the production he's putting up, Trey Harris is putting up, actually is. He's got 100 or more yards in back-to-back games. Laquan went five straight with 100. Can he go three more? Starting Saturday with Kentucky. He had 202 catches to Laquan for his career. Another Ole Miss record. While Trey Harris is at 198 across Louisiana Tech and now Ole Miss, but we're just doing the Ole Miss stats. And remember... This is a converted quarterback. Trey Harris was throwing touchdown passes to Malik Neighbors now with the New York Giants back in high school. He didn't become a wide receiver until he signed on with Louisiana Tech and then came over to Ole Miss while Laquan Treadwell, former five-star, the number one ranked wide receiver in the country for his class, A.J. Brown, a four-star, one of the very best wide receivers in the class, one of the very best players in Mississippi, arguably the best player or prospect in Mississippi that year. Jeffrey Simmons had an argument too. Now he's the highest paid wide receiver. AJ's the highest paid wide receiver in the NFL. At worst, Trey Harris is Laquan Treadwell good. And Laquan was a first rounder. But I mentioned Jim Nagy of the Senior Bowl at the top of the show. Great follow on Twitter for scouting nuggets, draft nuggets, at Jim Nagy underscore SB. And he touched on Trey Harris this week. He noted how what separates good NFL prospects from great ones is they generally make it all look so easy. And Trey never looked more at ease than in that 225-yard performance last week in Ole Miss's 52-13 win over Georgia Southern, the best team top to bottom they'd played so far. And Nagy mentioned how when he and the Senior Bowl did their grade-sharing calls around the NFL a year ago, how teams mostly had Trey Harris as an early day three selection. We're talking starting with the fourth round. There's no question now with Trey Harris. According to Jim Nagy, and after four games against Cupcakes, he has a day two grade. We're talking about the second round, third round. That's where A.J. Brown, D.K. Metcalf, that's where they were selected. And the knock on them coming out because of their freakish athletic tools was they just couldn't run the full route tree. They never learned that under Hugh Freeze and Grant Hurd, set back hampered by the offense that they were in. That's not Trey Harris. But he's also not the same athletic freak necessarily as A.J. Brown and D.K. Metcalf. But he's no spring chicken. He's just more in the mold of a Keon Coleman, a developmental wide receiver in name only now. He was a former quarterback years ago. He is the best at his craft. But he's still more athlete than pure receiver. There's still room to grow, to learn. But even then, Trey Harris is quieting all of those doubters too. If he keeps this up, you're talking about Quentin Johnson, who was a first-rounder, Laquan, first-rounder, Des Bryant. Those types ended up in the back of the first round. Laquan was one of three first-rounders for Ole Miss in 2016 with Laramie Tunsil and Robert Kimdichie. But this is now the company that Trey Harris is keeping, and he's only played four games. A long-term season outlook storyline is just how or where exactly does Trey Harris end up? Where does he finish out? Does he stay healthy? Because if he does, the company is Trey Harris and everybody else. Ole Miss is one of the very best teams in football because of new talent emerging without question. They have, I think, 30 on the watch list for the Senior Bowl. Walter Dolan, Prince Lee Monmiel, and Jared Ivey, Chris Poo, Paul, Jackson Dart, J.J. Pegues. That's just off the top. They're all top three round prospects today. Even if... ESPN's Mel Kuyper this week came out with his projections and has Jackson Dart as number seven currently for the NFL draft next year. But he'll climb. He'll climb if he keeps doing what he's doing. His question is, um, I think the, the draft or scouting questions for Jackson today are his deep ball accuracy and ability to consistently push the ball down the field. But there's time for Dart, too. I mean, he's got the second best Heisman odds now. According to FanDuel, he's plus 500 behind only Miami's Cam Ward, a former Ole Miss recruiting target. Basically, Nagy and me too, I suppose, are saying that Harris is at worst right now in the same draft position 
as Keon Coleman was. And Keon Coleman, who Ole Miss wanted and didn't get, was going to try to pair with Trey Harris, which would have been insane. He went to the Buffalo Bills with the first pick in last year's second round. Ole Miss has played only four games against Cupcakes. I keep saying that because I can hear all the complaints in or, or the criticism in the YouTube comments as I'm saying these things or telling you how good Trey Harris has been. Well, yeah, let's see what he does against heightened competition, and I allow that. He has 92 career Ole Miss catches. He's not catching Laquan's two at two, but pretty much everywhere else, he's in the conversation. It's notable. It's notable for so many reasons, and I think one of the biggest ones is this, and why I bring it up today, uh, another reason why I bring it up today. In this NIL and transfer era, the connectedness, if that's even a word, between teams and their fans has never felt more strained. What used to feel like our guys versus their guys, they don't feel like that anymore. It's not, not like it used to. The money changed it for good or bad. I talked to somebody this morning, Greg Ritchie, over at his body shop here in New Albany to get something fixed. He doesn't like the NIL stuff. All those kids are making millions. I get it. I understand why for some, they don't like this new era as much or they don't feel the same kind of connectedness for that. They don't feel like your guys. They're hired guns, but Ole Miss is showing a different way. Jackson Dart is a third-year starter at quarterback, just like Matt Corral was. One year shy of Eli's career at Ole Miss. And Jackson Dart's already in Matt Corral's company. And if he wins the Heisman, like I mentioned on Monday... Change Manny way to dart drive. You know, just don't drop that speed limit to two. That would be the first Heisman in Ole Miss's history. Eli Manning was robbed. He was robbed. Now, Danny White had no business beating Eli. He has also had no business beating Larry Fitzgerald. Had Larry Fitzgerald gotten it over Eli, fine. But Danny White, it shows you how things have changed in that way too. Blue Bloods back then were rewarded above everything else and everyone else regardless of what Eli meant to that team comparatively with Danny White in that Oklahoma team. John Smith could have led that Oklahoma team at quarterback. Trey Harris will truly be robbed if he keeps this up and doesn't win the Bolitnikoff. And that would be the first Ole Miss Bolitnikoff winner. Laquan was the first finalist. A.J. Brown was there. Elijah Moore was there. Both worthy candidates uh, had real arguments about getting it, but this pace, this is different. This is a whole different level. Because we're talking about the best Ole Miss wide receiver ever, statistically and possibly even off the field. Because this is where I remind you once more, Trey Harris is every bit the leader of Jackson Dart, every bit the leader of whoever you think is a leader on this team, J.J. Pegues. Trey Harris is that guy. He's that guy, and he's a superstar as one of those guys. There's no question about Jackson Dart. He'll be remembered forever. He can come back till he's 60. Lane Kiffin, same thing. Juice Kiffin. Trey Harris belongs right there. What an Ole Miss Rebel he's been. If the mayor is the standard and deserves a statue like we've been calling since 2016 because it was so miserable, well, Trey Harris could end up with one right beside him. Treat him that way. Don't take for granted what Trey Harris and others are doing. Individual accomplishment because the dream is coming true and that you've got a true title contending Ole Miss football team that you can cheer on every single week. But let's not forget individual accomplishment, especially when it's this historic. History in real time. And that'll do it for an all-new edition of Talk of Champions. Thank you for letting me uh, put out my pitch for Trey Harris today. He needs to get some shine. National media types. Are you talking enough about Trey Harris? I'm telling you, if Malik Neighbors last year was doubling up number two in the SEC in receiving yards, y'all would have been fawning all over him. Give this man some love. Give this man from love, some love. And Ole Miss fans, let's not allow individual competition to be lost in the season of, of awesomeness. There's going to be some disappointments. There are going to be some lows that come. But amidst all of that, there's still going to be guys like Trey Harris who are going to come back and are going to be remembered for this team for whatever it ends up being. It's going to be one of the all-time great teams, just based purely on what the talent is. He should be a face of it. He has been incredible on and off the field, and we got to start having these conversations, especially if at the end of the year, that is the leading wide receiver for a title-contending Ole Miss football team. 
It's crazy. Talk of Chafees is always brought to you, powered by Riverland Roofing. Up there, the roof up top, our friends at Riverland Roofing. For all your roofing needs, text or call Riverland Roofing today at 662-644-4297. That's 662-644-4297. You can visit them online at riverlandroofing.com. And this week, the Ole Miss Spirit is running a promotion over at omspirit.com because Ole Miss is opening SEC play. It's calls for celebration, even though they're kicking off at 11 a.m. New subs can sign up today with code REBS, R-E-B-S, REBS, and get 50% off an annual sub. That's code REBS, R-E-B-S, at omspirit.com to get 50% off an annual sub. Number six Ole Miss against 2-2 two and two Kentucky on Saturday, 11 a.m. Central Time on ABC. We'll have full coverage here on Talk of Champions and over at omspirit.com, the Ole Miss Spirit, omspirit.com. Coming out with us, a new Talk of Champions is coming Friday at noon. From now on, you'll get new Talk of Champions from me Monday, Wednesday, Friday at noon. Uh, Zach will have recruiting shows on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and then the postgame show working on that Still TBD, working on Brad, figuring some things out. But that's what you can expect, a new Talk of Champions on Friday. And we'll talk more about this upcoming matchup and the long-term ramifications of Ole Miss football in 2024-25 as they chase this title. But if you're going to love on some Jackson Dart, love on a Trey Harris too. Love on a Chris Poo Paul, the highest graded coverage player for Ole Miss at linebacker. That's Because he's been their leading tackler for three out of four games. But I just want to say, it's more than just being a, a downhill run defending balls to the wall linebacker that Ole Miss has been lacking. He's covered the hell out of some tight ends and slots as well. He's just been everything and more. So there are a lot of guys like that. And it starts with a guy like Trey Harris who came back, could have gone to the NFL, and he's ascending. He's taking it to another level. And he's taking it to a place where you're going to have to ask yourself one day, will you have to swap out that number one for number nine? Maybe number nine's made the new number. Hmm. Sand. Until then, until Friday with a new Talk of Champions, be good to each other, take care of each other, God bless.